In November 2014, Sony Pictures Entertainment, a major studio, was hit by one of the most high-profile and devastating cyber attacks in the history. This incident not only exposed the vulnerabilities in corporate cybersecurity, but it also had a significant political and cultural implications. The hacking group, also known as Guardians of Peace, breached Sony's network and stole a massive amount of sensitive data, including personal information of employees, unreleased films, and confidential emails. The attackers used a combination of phishing emails to gain Sony's access to network and malware to exfiltrate the data. With that being said guys, I welcome you all in today's video on top hacking techniques to make you aware about the hacking techniques used by the hackers. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before we move on, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got a postgraduate program in cybersecurity. This program is designed to equip you with the skills required to become an expert in the rapidly growing field of cybersecurity. This cybersecurity program aims to help you stay abreast of all the latest trends in cybersecurity as well. Now let's get started. So guys, let us start with the first hacking technique that is known as phishing. Phishing is when attackers send fake emails or messages that look like they are from trusted sources. These messages often contain links to fake websites designed to capture sensitive information like usernames, passwords, and credit card numbers. For example, you might get an email claiming to be from your bank and asking you to click a link to verify your account details. But the link leads to fake website. To avoid falling for phishing scams, always verify the sender's email address and look for signs like grammatical errors and avoid clicking on suspicious links. The next hacking technique which we are going to see is called SQL injection. So guys, SQL injection happens when attackers insert malicious SQL statements into an input field to exploit vulnerabilities in an application software. This can allow them to bypass authentication and access or even manipulate databases. For instance, entering drop table users into a login form that could delete a table of user data if the application doesn't properly sanitize inputs. To prevent SQL injection attacks, use parameterized queries, prepare statements, and proper input validation. The third one which we are going to see is called as cross-site scripting. Now, as we all know that, XSS involves injecting malicious scripts into the content from otherwise trusted websites. These scripts can steal cookies, session tokens, or other sensitive information. An example is a comment section on a website that allows users to post without an input validation, which can be exploited by inserting script that runs in the browser of anyone who views a comment. You can prevent XSS by implementing input validation escaping data correctly, and using content security policy headers. The next attack which we are going to see is also known as denial of service, or even distributed denial of service attacks. So guys, DOS attacks aim to make a network or service unavailable by overwhelming it with a flood of illegitimate requests. DDoS attacks involve multiple compromised systems attacking a target simultaneously. For example, sending massive amount of traffic to a website server can cause it to crash and become inaccessible to legitimate users. For this, you can use firewalls, raid limiting, and DDoS production services to filter and manage incoming traffic to prevent these attacks. The fifth one, which we are going to see guys, is also known as man in the middle attack. So if I talk about man in the middle attack guys, man in the middle attack occurs when an attacker secretly intercepts and relays messages between two parties who believe they are communicating directly with each other. This allows the attacker to capture and possibly alter the information being exchanged. For example, if I talk about intercepting data transmitted between a user and a website on an unsecured Wi-Fi network, 
which can capture login credentials or sensitive data. So for this guys, you can use encryption protocols like HTTPS, employ strong authentication mechanisms, and avoid using unsecured networks for sensitive communication to prevent MITM attacks. The sixth one which we are going to study is known as password attacks. So guys, password attacks involves attempting to gain unauthorized access to a system by cracking or guessing passwords. The techniques include brute force attacks, dictionary attacks, and key logging. A brute force attack systematically tries every possible combination of characters until the correct password is found. To protect against password attacks, use strong and unique passwords for each account. Enable multi-factor authentication and use password managers to store and generate secure passwords. So I hope so guys, you have got a brief idea regarding password attacks. Now, this one is very crucial for everyone. In order to maintain confidentiality and integrity of your data, please follow what I have said. The next one which we are going to understand is known as social engineering. So guys, social engineering exploits human psychology rather than technical vulnerabilities. Attackers manipulate individuals into divulging confidential information or performing actions that compromise security. For example, pretending to be an IT support technician and convincing an employee to reveal their login credentials. You can educate employees about social engineering tactics, establish verification protocols, and encourage skepticism towards unsolicited requests for sensitive information to prevent these attacks. The eighth one, which we are going to see, is known as ransomware. So guys, ransomware is a type of a malware that encrypts the victim's file, making them inaccessible until a ransom is paid to the attacker. Even if the ransom is paid, there is no guarantee that the files will be decrypted. An example is a WannaCry. This was a ransom attack which encrypted files on infected computers and demanded payment in Bitcoin for their release. Regularly back up important data, keep software up to date, and use reliable antivirus and anti-malware solutions to prevent ransomware attacks. This is very, very important, guys. The next one which we are going to see is known as malware. So guys, malware is any software which is intentionally designed to cause damage to a computer, server, client, or network. The types of malware include viruses, worms, trojans, and spyware. A trojan horse disguises itself as a legitimate program, but once executed, provides unauthorized access to the user system. For this, in order to prevent, you can install and regularly update antivirus software. Avoid downloading software from untrusted sources, and be cautious with email attachments and links to prevent malware infections. And finally, we are going to see a zero-day exploit. So guys, you'll be wondering what exactly is a zero-day exploit? Actually, a zero-day exploit targets a previously unknown vulnerability in software or hardware, giving developers zero days to fix it before it is exploited by attackers. For example, an attacker discovers a flaw in a popular web browser that allows them to execute arbitrary code on user systems before a patch is released. So in order to avoid it, you can keep all the softwares up to date, you can use security tools to detect anomalous behavior and participate in bug bounty programs to encourage the discovery of vulnerabilities to prevent zero-day exploits. So guys, understanding these hacking techniques can help an individual and organizations also to take proactive measures and to protect themselves from cyber threats. Regular security training, robust policies, and up-to-date defenses are crucial in mitigating the risk associated with these attacks. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on top hacking techniques at Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. 
Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing programs, and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.